Ja. Also die Drohne wird jetzt mit der Information gefüttert, wo sie... Äh Welcome to another tutorial in monitoring of forest resources. I'm here together with my colleague Niels Nölke, who is our remote sensing expert. And today we will take you on a small student excursion to implement a UAV flight campaign, so a drone video. And we will guide you a little bit through the process of flight planning, flying the drone, and also show you some of the products that we can get from such a drone campaign at the end. So the total area that we want to fly in this mission is 500 hectare altogether, which is a quite huge area for a UAV campaign or mission. And we can definitely not fly it with such a toy drone, even if we can also do nice things with these small drones or UAVs. We have a larger copter here, which is also not suitable. Such a copter just needs a lot of energy to stay in the air and the range of such a copter is also limited. It has many advantages, but today for this huge area we need something with fixed wings. So something that is flying based on aerodynamic principles and where we only need maybe one motor. And the choice for today is this Inspire drone, maybe you can yeah, just so explain. Part of it, so that's also a fixed wing drone, but it can start vertically. So that's a huge advantage. We don't need much area for the start and landing process. And yeah, as you see, that's only a part, but it looks already quite big. So the battery is missing and the front is missing. And here we have the sensors. We have this drone is equipped with a multispectral sensor and uh, RGB sensor, which is a normal Sony camera which is used here. And you can retrieve two products, so an RGB image and our multispectral image, which we need for vegetation analysis, for example. And this would be the choice for our mission. So let's uh, prepare the flight yeah. planning and let's go out and try it. We are now out in the field, so all the flight planning has been done in the office. And here my two colleagues Hans Fuchs and Niels Nölke are doing the pre-flight check. So they have a very long checklist where they need to check every single item. We also have checked that we have a legal permission, which is not so easy. Sometimes it turns out that this is even the most complex part of a whole project. In the background you see the forest area that we are going to fly. It's a quite huge area, more than 200 hectares. It's only the southern part of our project area that we cover with this one flight mission. So they are still busy with the pre-flight checks, with uh, putting the drone parts together and submitting the flight planning to the drone. Coming back from the field, the real work starts. Some people underestimate all the different steps of data processing that are required to make something useful out of the tons of photos we took outside in the field. Taking the photo is the easiest part. Now we start to process the data. And for this, we need a lot of computational power that we have here. On the other side, Niels is already busy with the photogrammetric analysis of all of the photos we took in the field. We have some thousands of photos that need to be aligned and matched in the photogrammetric workflow that um, we see here. What we need to have at the end, or want to have, are the typical products. A digital surface model, a digital terrain model and an auto mosaic of the total area. 
The auto mosaic already looks fine. We have a very high resolution. What we also get as a side product is a three-dimensional point cloud that allows us to create a 3D model uh, of the total forest area. This is something that is very useful to derive the digital surface model and helps us at the end to calculate the tree heights as the difference between the terrain and the surface of the crowns. It is important to remember that the photogrammetric workflow will only give us a surface model. This is different to LiDAR data that are actively penetrating the canopy. So in order to derive a terrain model, we need to identify those points that are really coming from the ground. The two different products we derived is the digital terrain model and the digital surface model. By subtracting both from each other, we can derive the height of the vegetation, which is a very nice product that we can use uh, to identify single trees and also to determine the tree heights, at least those that we see. So you see, from such a UAV mission, we can derive many different products. The most essential ones are maybe these ones, but there is much, much more, depending on the sensor that we are using. And UAVs will play a major role in forest monitoring in future. Thank you for watching this short video and hope to see you in one of our next tutorials. <laughs>